Amen. Praise God, everybody, and welcome back to another time of study. It's Amen. good to see you all out on this rainy day. Amen. 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 But this is the, truly the day that the Lord has made, and we're glad you're here, and we're going to rejoice. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We ask continually that you continue to lift up our sick and shut-in in prayer. Amen. Not only our sick and shut-in, but all sick and shut-in, especially those in the hospitals and those behind prison bars as well. Let's go and, and do just that. Father, we come again, Master, in the mighty name of Jesus, and we are praying tonight, Lord God, as we pray continually every Wednesday night for those that are sick and those whose head are bowed down in bereavement. We ask that you continue to comfort them, Lord God, and, and take care of those who are in need of care. And Father, as we come again tonight, we ask that your divine spirit will guide and lead and guide us through our lesson plan for tonight. We just thank you, Master, that life is well with us as it is. And Father, if we sin and sin in the thing that was out of the way and not becoming of you, Lord God, who you are, we pray that you will please forgive us, Master. We just thank you, Lord God, for this day and every day that you allow us to behold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This evening, uh, our lesson is going to come out of uh, Matthew chapter 5. And, and in this, I'm attempting to uh, teach uh, the breakdown of the Sermon on the Mount, if I can. And this is a lot of verses to deal with. Amen. But we're going to strive to, to uh, dissect the, the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to first, we're going to look at the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, and that's from chapter, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're just going to only read maybe three or four verses, four verses of chapter 5. Amen. Just to get the foundation when Jesus, discerned, when Jesus says, bless it. We're going to go from there. Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 5. We're going to teach on the Beatitudes tonight, but we're going to hopefully, we'll, Lord's will, will cover the entire sermon of Jesus. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, the first four, four verses of that said chapter, it said, And seeing the multitude, he went up to a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4, and we'll, we'll start with verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be confident. Amen. Comfort. Amen. Amen. Again, tonight we, we, we're teaching out of the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew. This is one of, sermon, one of Jesus' great sermons. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. It's legendary. Oftentimes we have referred back to his sermon. But we're going to look at the Beatitudes tonight, and we're going to go on further in looking at his sermon. Amen. First thing we notice in chapter 5, <laughs> verses 1 and 2, he says, the Bible said, and, and seeing the multitude, seeing the multitude, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And when they came unto him, verse 2 says, and he opened his mouth, and taught them saying, and we'll see what the Beatitudes and how it comes, how he began to share with them. The first thing we got to notice what Jesus does. He has this discernment. Discernment. He sees the multitude and he discerns for what he sees. He moves away. He's been, he's been walking. He's been teaching. He moves up higher in the mountain so he can get a better view of the multitude. He says when he sees the multitude, he went up into the mountain so he can get a, a better, clear look at the, at the multitude. And he sat down, and the disciples came to him. And he, when, he, when he sat down, the disciples came to him, he opened his mouth and talked. Amen. And when he began to teach, in verse 3, he says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. In verse 3. All right? The first thing he says in, 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 in verse 3, he talks about the poor in spirit. Poor in spirit. Now he's discerning what he's seeing out of the multitude. And if I can get you with your sanctified mind 
to think in this terms. He sees the mother too. Right. Mm -hmm. he, he, he sees their mental attitude where they act physically as well as spiritually. He sees them. He, said, he sees them, right? He, and the, he said the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit are those who are spiritually bankrupt before God. They feel as if in their mind they have nothing to bring to God. And there's a lot of people we have dealt with down to the years, have done a whole lot of things and feel as if they can't be saved. Right. They feel as if they don't done so much. They can't, can't, just can't be forgiven for what the things that they've done. They feel spiritually bankrupt. Yeah. Amen? And so Jesus began to encourage them. He says, look what he said. In the, he says, he said, there is the kingdom of God. So those who are spiritually bankrupt, those who feel as if they have nothing to bring to God, he encouraged them and telling them, you have been granted access to the kingdom of heaven. Because of their humble approach of unworthiness before God. And this is really where God wants us to be. Right? He, he wants us to always be humble before him. Not that we got everything. But we got to recognize he's a sovereign God. Amen. And being a sovereign God, we approach him with humility. And by approaching him with humility, we show that we have respect for him. We reverence who he is. Because he's God and God all by himself. Amen. And being God, he's able to discern your thoughts. He know your thoughts are like words to him. So ain't no sense in trying to hide anything from him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So they feel that, that with their humble approach and their worthiness before God, amen, and their humbleness before him, amen, he's, this is what we call spiritual currency. Being humble before God. First Peter uh, chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, it covers that. Look what Peter says to, to his writing. He said, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hands of God. Humble yourself. It's up, it's up on the board. You have to search for it. It's right there on the flash ring. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hands of God. Mm -hmm. What did he say? Let go of your will, right? Let go of what you're trying to do and just humble yourself to him. Allow him to take control. Humble yourself under the mighty hands of God and do what he said, that he may exalt you in, in what kind of time? Due when is due time? Right, now. right, absolutely. So when you're trying to struggle, trying to put things together, trying to do something, he said, just humble yourself, let go of it. Let God have it. Recognize that he's a sovereign God. He can do all things with faith. He, and then in verse step 7, he said, cast in what? All the care. Care. For he what? So he wants you to, he wants you to cast whatever cares, whatever causes you trouble, whatever causes you to be confused, whatever pickle you in, he said, cast that, cast that on to me. Right. And, and he cares for you. This is one of the key verses that I, I, I start remembering, start quoting, remembering when I get myself into a situation where, where I can't handle it, I'm at a, and I'm at a, a stalemate, where I can't go forward, I can't go back, then what I do is just let me, get, take my hands off of it, take my mind off of it. When I say hands, take my mind off of it, and allow God to deal with it. When I take my hands and my mind off of it and just give it to him, he handles it for me. Right. And sometimes he just don't handle it immediately, but he handles it for me to a point where I can go on to sleep, and in the morning now he gives me how to work that thing out. So 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 the ones who are poor in spirit, they are they feel that spirit of bankrupt. They feel as if they don't have nothing to bring to God that's worthy of God. And all God said, just come unto me. You who is heavy laden. And heavy laden, he said, I'll give you rest. Right? Just let go of the thing and just come unto you. He moves from, he moves from uh, the poor in spirit to verse 3, or verse 4. Right? 
Look what he said in verse 4. Blessed are they that moan, for they what shall be what? Now you can throw a whole lot of stuff in that moan. Because there's a whole lot of things that we find ourselves in that can cause us to moan. Most, the one present is a death of a loved one. Right, or 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 it can lose a loss of a job, whatever can cause you some stress. Right, in, in this particular case, this individual it, it, he's grieving or they are grieving. It's something they cannot. It, it's they're in a place where they cannot find any comfort. They can't find any joy. The situation has got so dire in them that they find themselves with their heads in their hands and just moaning with their, hand, their heads down. They're so sad. They're so sorrowful. And the condition they have to have them down. He said they shall be what? Comforted. And Jesus called them that moan blessed. <laughs> Amen. But when you're moaning, you don't feel as if you're blessed. Right? You, you, don't, you don't feel blessed when you when you stressed out or you sad and you going to, and you your heart is heavy, you grieving because of the of the passing of a loved one, you don't you don't feel blessed during those type of situations. But but Jesus says blessed. In the, in the verses in the in the beatitude blessed here in, in the text uh, uh, says is to be happy. But in this particular case, he carries the idea of being inevitable. Means means highly desired by the by the Spirit of God to bring you comfort. You at a place where the where the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit want to bring you some comfort so that you can get past this grieving period that you're in. And one of the things we find ourselves, we find in, in Christendom that when people have uh, loved ones have passed on, they spend a lot of time in the grief, in grief, a long time. And the Spirit of God is there to help them through the grieving process. But they don't turn it over to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to bring them through the grieving process. So, yes. so, 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 so uh, or they should be comforted. The comfort would be coming from the Word of God. I said yes. Scripture can bring you comfort. Yeah. But I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on the limb. We have we have houses inside of us the Holy Spirit. Right. He 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 can bring comfort to our hearts by bringing uh, uh, joyful situations in our lives, memories in our lives. You follow what I'm saying? Okay. While you meditating, if you meditating into meditation on God, the Spirit of God can bring to your memory the, the happy moments. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. The happy moments to bring to you. Because that's what that's what the Spirit of God is there to bring you through every situation, to bring to bring knowledge to you, and to bring you through this grieving process. He says, Blessed are you. Right. And then you after the right, the scripture can bring you confidence. Right? You look up where you can bring confidence for it in your scripture. But the Holy Spirit is there. The one thing we miss as believers is the voice of God Amen. speaking to us. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. We're so caught up in the hustle bustle, 
We don't hear the gentle voice of the Spirit of God speaking to us. Amen. When we when we meditate, it's not necessary you meditating on His Word, but when you meditate it, you're thinking about the good things, and you begin to think about the, the good times that you had with your loved ones. You see, it can it can bring joy and happiness to you. So the, the sad moment, the, the memory of it, a person's death, he can show you the life and, and the happy moments that you have with your loved one. So it, both ways is, is absolutely, the word of God can bring you that comfort and also the Holy Spirit that's housed inside of you speaks to you, share with you and bring you comfort while you meditating and thinking about the passing of your home. Even, even, even in that, uh, sometimes when people are, you know, uh, you can say SLA deathbed, mm -hmm. sometimes it, 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 it still be to, it get to a point where you can let that person go. Yeah. Because they, you, know, you can see the suffering in them, what they're going through. Yeah. And some people, they, they don't know how to let go. Absolutely right. You know, I've seen occasions. There, there also another side of this moaning. The scholars believe the moaning here is they are moaning because of the guilt of sin, hmm. because of their history, some things they've done in the past. You see what I'm saying? And so, and so the guilt of sin is weighing heavy on them. This is some scholars believe the moaning is not so much of a grieving of the passing of a loved one. But it is a moment because of the guilt of sin. And because of the guilt of sin, you, they, they moan. But here's what here's what the here's what Paul wrote to the 2 Corinthians, the Corinthians over in 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. He said, Blessed about 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And, and, he's, and this is a verse that uh, it, it's about God who's the comfort. He's the God of all comfort in every situation. You have it, sister? Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. I have it here. It says, says blessed, blessed, it says in here, it says, Jesus Christ. God of mercy and God of all comfort. Verse 4, who comfort us in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comfort of God. So he so the scripture saying, God comforts you in every situation that we go through. There's nothing God won't do to bring you comfort in those grieving situations, in a situation where you perhaps you are moaning because of the guilt of sin. Maybe it is so heavy on your heart. But you gotta learn, we have to learn, or when we challenge or we are witness to someone who feel that way, we gotta tell them they have to give it to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, in verse three, Blessed are those that moan, for they shall be comforted. So we know that those who are grieving, they shall be comforted by God. Amen. Then he, then he say, no. also he tells us to share those words with others. That God will comfort us in times of trouble or times of tribulation. Look at verse 5. Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall what? Inherit what? Inherit. Right. The meek conveys a humility and a trust that they have in God. The meek is someone who's self-centered, have a self-centered attitude. The meek is someone who's, who's, who relies, or not relies so much on themselves, but they rely on the strength of others as well to help them. So when we are, when we are weak in strength, amen, the meek is there to, to help us in every, every way in our lives. In other words, the meek live a life of humility that will go out of their way to care for the others, others need more so than themselves. Over in Galatians chapter 6, 
And I didn't give that one to each uh, sister, sister uh, Smith. But in chapter 6, he tells only the meek. Amen. Those who are of the spirit can help those who are have been caught in the fall. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, say, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fault, he said, You who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, in the, in the spirit of humility. So, so consider thyself, thou also shall be tempted. In other words, when you're trying to help someone, you got to do it in the spirit of meekness. You can't do it so that you can get, uh, someone can, uh, you get the, uh, the, the credit for it. Do it out of spirit of meekness. Not, not doing it, amen, out of the way, but doing it out of meekness because now, you don't want right to get right the... There, what kind of fault is we talking about right there? It's sin. Sin. Yeah. That's what I'm so. Yeah. Yeah, because you can, in, in, when you say call it in a fault, it can be several things, but, but the Bible boils it down to sin. Right. And the only way you can help, he said, the only one can help them is, is in the spirit of meekness. Mm -hmm. Out of humbleness. Because a lot of people, when they help you, they're going to tell somebody they're going to help you. And you have to help them considering yourself, lest you be tempted. Mm -hmm. Tempted to brag and boast about what you've done for someone else. Yeah. All right? So, so, so I, I, when I was in the street, they say meekness is a, was a weakness, but after meekness is a strength. Amen? Amen. 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 So, so not only do not only are we, they blessed, he said, but those who are are, are blessed and meek, he said, they shall inherit the earth. Now we understand now Jesus is teaching here on the mount, right? In, inherit the earth. He, he's talking about he, he's, he's not talking about salvation per se, because salvation is of grace. But what he's teaching them, teaching the, the, the audience or the multitude, he's teaching them how to be humble and not try to take advantage of those who are less fortunate than themselves. And he tells them, when you do this, he says, you shall inherit the earth. A whole lot of folks do a lot of things, good things around the world. You never ever hear anything, never hear anything of what they do. A lot of people give donations, never share uh, what they do as far as giving to the those who are poor, giving to the hospitals, giving to nonprofit organizations. Never disclose what they do. Any question? Verse verse six. He said, "Blessed are blessed are they which what and, and after." They shall be Real. right, right, right. This, can you imagine the intense longing for someone who's, who who see a whole lot of stuff going on in the world, but they hunger for hunger for righteousness, hunger for things and for the justice to be done. Amen. For them to catch the person that doing the crime. So here's a, they hunger and thirst. For righteousness, they want righteousness. Someone who can stand and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And he says to them, he said, they, he said, they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, he said, they shall be filled. Your desire shall be filled, shall be met. <coughs> Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That your your desire shall be met. There's, we, we should have a whole lot of folks after we come out of the pandemic should be hungry and thirsty. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, I miss the fellowship that we had. Mm -hmm. It seemed like they, they didn't miss it. Amen. They use it as an excuse now just to stay at home. Amen. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. 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 So, so the righteousness is a righteous... The righteousness, when you look at the righteousness in the Bible, it's a, a righteous standard. And the only standard that we look at, that's the standard that God has. 
His, his righteous standards. So we don't bring, we don't take, bring our standards up to God. We bring his standards down to us. We strive to live the life in, in front of the world, amen, so they can see our light shine. So we, we are a reflection of Jesus Christ living in us. So his standard should be in our life. And so those that are hungry and thirsty, they're hungry and thirsty for God's righteous standard to, to be on display here in the world. All the killing and all the misjustice and all the things that are happening, they hunger. They hunger for that. They want to see that. He says, shall, he says, shall be filled. He don't give a timeline on that one. There's no timeline when it shall be filled, he's, but it shall be filled. And Sister Holmes sang a song saying, if God said it, she believed it. Right? So if he said it, it will be done. Amen. It shall be filled. And there are times when we're going to see the goodness of God, the righteousness of God, standards being just on display in this world that we live in. Amen? Amen. 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 Moving right on. Moving right on. Look, look what verse 7. Verse 7 says, it's, it's, verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Right? Those who, those who want to get back, amen, he says, be merciful. If you be merciful, you're going to obtain mercy. Amen? Jesus' promise here is revealed that the kingdom of God operates from mercy. His, his mercy and his grace covers us even right now. Amen. We should have been dead, but, but no, he allowed us to be alive. Mercy is what we should get. But his mercy shows up, and, and, and his mercy shows up, and we don't receive what we should receive from the Lord. It's because of Jesus, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen? Amen. I, I told a story when I first taught on the blessed attitudes uh, that when I, I was in my supervision position at DuPont and the guy was he just jacking off he wasn't doing the work and he was getting other people to do his, do his work for him I don't know how he got him to do his work for him I don't know if he was paying him to do it but he was just getting him to do it and every time he would leave the office he'd be gone all day and, and, but, it's, but the work was done when he came back. And so I didn't have no gripes. But the work was done. But then when I went to check on him one, one, one afternoon, he wasn't in his place. He was on the other side of DuPont. And so I, I knew then that he wasn't doing, doing the work. And my supervisor told me, call him to the office. And you, you need to reprimand him. In fact, they said to me, you need to let him go. Because some of the DuPonts complaining that he's all up in the office area talking to some of the DuPonters. Some of the lady friends up here in DuPont said, you need to let him go. And so when I brought him in the office and started talking with him, he, you know, he, he, didn't, he seemed as though he didn't care. But then he got to the point when I said, man, we got to let you go. And he said, man, don't let me go, man. And he said to me, say, show me some mercy. <laughs> He did. he did. I was just a deacon then, but he said, show me some mercy. I said, man, they, they told me to let you go, man. And every time I get to this particular text and I see it, I think about me not showing the brother mercy and letting the brother go. But well, was, it, was it out of your hands? Not really. I could have just sent him home for the day or gave him a day. But uh, I just... I tell can I be truthful with you? Yeah. Me and him didn't get along at all. <laughs> that didn't yeah, no, it, that didn't. <laughs> I, 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 he was a sharp dude, had a had a uh, had a curl in his head. He was, yeah, he was a sharp dude, man. He was, he was, I was a little jealous of him. Do you think it ministered him when he asked you for mercy? Huh? Do you think it ministered him when he asked you for mercy? No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't. I mean, when, when the man say, go ahead and send him home with him, go, I felt relieved because I had that thing. I, 
And he would come to workshop and never would get dirty. Everybody else was dirty when he come back. He had skills. Huh? He had <laughs> skills. You're <laughs> supposed to do his job for him. Yeah, yeah. So, but that always weighed on my heart. Uh, now I have I now would have a different I would have a different approach to that. If I was ever in that situation and and someone asked to cry to have a little mercy on me. But we can still be merciful and be stern. Can you in really certain, in certain instances? I'm sorry. Put them together. Give me an example. Well, I mean, if let me say, if I was in a position where <coughs> I was done wrong and all the evidence points to this one individual doing wrong, I don't have to be severe, so severe as to try to impose punishment on them <coughs> that would do him just to retaliate. Yeah. I, mean, I could still be a little bit lenient. Yeah. Toward the situation. Yeah. That in that way you're saying you're being merciful. That you're keeping your job, but you're gonna you're gonna get some you're gonna keep that reprimand, you know, yeah. we're gonna get that right up or we're gonna put you on probation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would, would be within my yeah. within my duty to have that authority. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Show a little generosity to to the guy, you know, yeah. be be more forgiving. Because there are there are some Things that we've done in our lives, right? Man, right. We didn't show no mercy, and then he comes back around. He said, "If you show mercy, right. I'm gonna show mercy." Yeah. You know, so, so uh, yeah. I'm glad I didn't come up for you when I got in trouble. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you something. I got in trouble more than one time at work, and one time they wanted to fire me. Yeah. And the union guy told me, "Don't worry about it. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna fire you." And uh, I told him, I said, man, I don't want you going up there with me. Mm -hmm. The union guy, because, you know, they go up there and start cussing. And I had already prayed about it. Yeah. And so that's what I took with me. I took God with me. Yeah. Told the man I was sorry for what I did. He, I told him what happened. And he said, okay, we're going to need three days off, but you come on back. I yeah. said, that's good to me. I want some time off anyway. That's, 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 that's pretty much what, uh, what Donnie <laughs> said. Yeah. 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 I wasn't mad about that three days off because I'm just glad I had my job. <laughs> I still had my job. I heard Sister Ed Ruth say something back like there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the world don't treat us the way which we should treat them. Mm -hmm. But then there are all occasions where the world treats, can treat us better than yeah. some of the Christians treat right. ourselves, treat one another. But we have, we have this standard that Jesus is saying to the mother to who is teaching to, he said, you show mercy, and God will show mercy back to you. Yeah. And we don't know when that mercy that he shows back to yeah. us is gonna come around. And there are times when we have actually been sick or we have some occasion that we have been in, in some dreadful situation where his mercy shows up. That's right. His mercy and his grace shows up in our lives. And, and I, I always go to that one point that I, I kind of hit home all the time. I, maybe the congregation get, get tired of me hearing me say that, but we should, been, we should have been dead. There are times in our life where, where things have happened where the outcome could have been where we would not have been here in this yeah. life that we're comfortable living right now. Amen. Would, would, uh, would sin just do that automatic? Sin? Would yeah. sin? Yeah, we poison you know, death. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, you yeah, say the, yeah, wages, right. the wages of yeah. sin yeah. is yeah. death. So, so yeah. basically, Pretty much be the whole world. Yeah. Well, the wages of sin is death. If you continue to sin, you know what I'm saying? If you haven't given your life to Christ, right? And, and, and you are on the outside of Christ, so to being in Christ, and you sin, he said, the wages of sin is death. So so you're gonna stand and be judged for, for rejecting Christ mm -hmm. because you you live you're a sinner. You're absolutely right. But through Jesus Christ, there is life. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
So we have, when we sin, being a believer, being saved, and we use the word saved, or, or being born again, converted, we have an advocate in Jesus Christ. Right? Because the Bible says, 1 John 1 and 9, right? he's faithful and he's just Amen. to forgive us of all sin. And to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So he clears, he clears us up. He, he does that even when you even when you and I have done something during the course of the day, not aware of, not a, we're not aware of what we've done. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father and he's pleading our case throughout the course of the day. That's that blood that covers us. Amen. Because when he looks from heaven, he doesn't look at uh, who we are, right, as, as being a mortal man, uh, he looks at us as, 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 as part of the family of Jesus Christ. So we, we don't stand in judgment, but he chastises us. I guess that's why we get to that point where he chastises us. Amen. Because we are, we are his own. And, and chastisement comes in, in various ways that we have shared before. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so the, if the world don't show mercy, at least you and I, who are part of the family of Jesus Christ, should show mercy. Amen. Amen. Now, now the verse 8, verse 8 and 9, and the rest of the verses, look what he said, the pure in heart. That's, that's one you have, really have to contemplate and, and, and examine yourself. Because he says, he says in verse he verse eight, he said, blessed are the pure in heart. And, and here's what he said, and this is what he declared, they shall see God. And, and, and the, whole, the whole part of regeneration is to change your heart. Yep. It's to take that stony heart out of you. He said, pure in heart, being honest, truthful, pure in heart. I tell you, I tell you what happened to me. I was at Ace Hardware, and I was buying something. Mm -hmm. And the guy runs up, and hey, he come up to four dollars. But I knew it was worth more than four dollars, so I said, hey, man, I ain't going to do you like that. <laughs> you know, try again, you know, you check the price again. So he come and did it again, and come up with four dollars. So I took it because I tried to tell him, man, I should have went and got somebody else, but it was worth more than four dollars. Yeah. It was. But I gave it to get it right. Yeah. You, 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 mm. But but you say he's scanned? Yeah. Well, that's scanned. It's on the scan, right? Yeah, he's a new guy. Oh. <laughs> but the scan, that's what the scanner for the new guy. Yeah, they that's right. I think they were four dollars a piece. I had ten of them. Oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> This what it says. Look, 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 look. He said, having a pure heart, a morally pure, honest, and sincere. They also who integrity is noted by the single-minded commitment to serve God, the attitude of it to, to serve God, the attitude to do the right thing. Amen. Old time. Old time. Old time. Yeah. Have you ever get got back some more change than you supposed to get oh, and gave it back to them? I have. Yeah, I have too. Well, Pastor, right there, let's say they shall see God. Yes. Let's say they shall see God. Yes. I mean, in Jesus, right? See God. Yeah. I mean, you know, well, I mean, God it, it, it's, they are one, man. They're, no, right? They're one. Right. So, yeah, even when you look at it, you see he, God. Now, now listen, listen. Look what he's saying. Listen, who teaching? Mm -hmm. Who's teaching? Jesus teaching. Okay. Right? And what, who, who, who did he say? He said, they shall see God. He, did, he didn't say, they shall see me. He said, they shall see God. But that's, that's Jesus. Because you know God is spirit, so you can't see him. I mean, because you know, you, can't, you will no see him. Is it no man when we get there, we're going to see him. He's, no, he's not talking, to, he's talking about after they die. You gonna see God. You you your pure heart. Pure heart is not something you do one day. This is a consistent right. living, kind of living, 
Right? This is what, listen, let me, let me, let me think because you got me started. Look at 14 and 1. When, look at or John 14 and 1. St. John 14 and 1. Help me, Holy Ghost. You got a sister Henley? Is it's up there? Yeah. You got it? Look what he said. Look what he said. Look what he said. Look, look, look what this is Jesus talking to the disciples now. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Look what he said. You believe in God. Believe also in me. All right. Isn't that separating two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, you believe in God, believe in Jesus. So if He's, you see God, that means. Listen to what I'm saying. He's separating the two. They are one. God and the Father, God and the Son, God and the Holy Spirit. But he separates the two. He says, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Then look what the next verse. Can you get to? You know, he said, in my father's house. I just yeah. he's <laughs> right. He's, he's separating the two. He's a God, yes. He said, in my father's house or what? If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He's, he's separating the two. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They all operate in one. Right, yeah. so even if you operate in one, he see Jesus is saying God. Yeah, he said he yeah. well, well, he he said this, he said this to his disciples because he sent Jesus to to this world because they couldn't see God. He he's the perfect image of God. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because our mortal eyes, our physical eyes couldn't have pulled hold him. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. But once we get to heaven. We're going to see him. We're going to change from this mortal to immortality. Amen. We're going to take off this corrupt body and we're going to, because no corrupt body can, 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 can't stand before God. That's what Moses said. God, Moses said to God, what did he say to God? I'm glad you came to Bible study because I, I, I need some to go somewhere. What did he say? Moses said, he want to see you. Right. Yeah. What did God say? No, no. He said, "Ain't no man ever laid hands yeah. on me yeah. and yeah. leave." That's yeah. what I'm talking about. So you let him see his backside. So that's why I'm saying. You're, and you're right. You see the Father. You gonna see Jesus, the Father. You gonna see God. Yeah, God. You can. We can help. We gonna see Him. That's right. We gonna see Him. I believe that. Yes. We gonna that's see right. God. Jesus, God. We're going to see God. We're going to see God the Father. We're going to see Jesus. Okay. Right? I'm telling you, man. Here it is. Let me show you. Give, you, give me give you a picture of, of seeing him. In Revelation, he says, he said, there'll be no need of the Son. Mm -hmm. He said, but the glory of God shall be their light. When you see that, that big light in heaven, catch up with me when you get to heaven. And I'll show it to you. I'll take you on the two. <laughs> catch up with me. <laughs> the, the glory of God is, 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 is so bright and so amazing. He said, the glory of God shall be our life. And men, they're going to go in and out of the gate. You see them. And this is what he actually what he conveying here to the pure heart. You're gonna to get to heaven because you, your heart is pure. You 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 you're not you're not infiltrated with sin. You, you know what I'm saying? You're not living a violent life. You you you're doing everything morally right. He said he's you're still on that track. 
And this is Jesus teaching. And he, he actually in his teaching, he's 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 a part of he's a part of the triune God, but in his ministry by here him, on earth. Yeah, by him being uh on earth yeah. in a body. Yeah. He could teach him. Like he did say, when you see me, you see Jesus, Jesus. what I do, you know. Yeah. But a lot of times, he, like he said in this, you're going to see the Father. You're going to see the Father. Gonna yeah, see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They all make one. Oh, yeah. But while he was on earth, he was in a human body, yeah. so he could let us know what he, heaven was all he, about. He, even before he got to earth, he, he was there. They say in the beginning, they say, let us make He was there in the He was there. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he was he, he was sealed in the Old Testament. He wasn't. He was. He was known as the uh, the angel of the Lord. But this in, in scripture it says, "Let us yes. make man in His own image." Yes. So Jesus was there. He okay. was there from the beginning. Yes. He's the Lugos. If you, if you really understand the spirituality of of the Triune God, he, he was the Lugos. He was the Word. He took on the word, took on flesh. The word, yeah. If you read it, if you really read it, he, he said, the, he said the word Amen. took on flesh, yeah, right, and walked among us. So when it said in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, God was the word, and then you go to fourteen, he said the word became flesh. So God became flesh, Jesus. The word, yes, yeah. He he, he took on flesh. In his spiritual form, he's a word. He's, he, he was a spiritual being. Took on flesh. In order to invade, in order to come into this, this third world we live in, he came through just like you and I come into it. Come into the pregnancy of a pregnant woman named Mary. He, he didn't break, he, he broke no laws, no laws of the earth of being born. That's right. Came, came through just like you and I. Grew up just like a normal child would grow up. Only thing we have records of is Jesus at 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And maybe at, maybe when he was a young lad, when the, when the, when the, uh, the, the, what they call them on the when they came from afar, but when at twelve years old we have a record of it. Then after twelve, God closed the curtain. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is spoken or said of him. A lot of a lot of writers and scholars try to make things up mm -hmm. concerning what Jesus might have done, but nothing else. They have no other record of Jesus from twelve years old. Up until the, he turned thirty years old, he, at thirty years old he left his he left his mother. He hung up his carpenter belt, went down to the river Jordan to be baptized. And once he was baptized, that thing we just had the scriptures being right. We just had the scriptures Sunday school. And when he was baptized, he was moved by the Spirit going to the desert to be, be tempted. He put Adam in a perfect environment. He failed the test. Put Jesus in a in a in a desert environment. And, and Jesus passed the test. Amen. And, and most scholars call Jesus the second Adam. Second Adam yeah. So so yeah, he he they shall see God. So so this is an encouragement. The, the beatitude is an encouragement for the multitude that will listen to his sermon. Those who, who's been stressed out, poor in spirit, he, this is a good word for them. Say, you bless. You, you bless. He said, the kingdom of heaven is yours. You have assets. Those who are mourning, you're going to be comforted. So, he, so he's bringing, he's, he's a preacher on the mountain, preaching the word. And, and giving encouragement and comfort to those who listen to the, to the preaching that he's doing. 
Just like, just like, just like uh, uh, Brother James and, and others who preach, it's to bring words of encouragement. Yeah. Comfort to your heart. Look at nine, verse nine. This is this is this is one. Look at the peacemakers. He said, they shall be called the children of God. Yeah, right? They, 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 they not one who, who, who going out just trying to make peace, but they, 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 what they do, they seek to, seek to, to end things in a peaceful manner. <laughs> you know, let's, we can bring this to, to a, a, a peaceful solution. There got to be a solution to this. That we in. They have peacemakers in all the time going all overseas <laughs> trying to make peace. But peace comes with a value, comes with a cost. He says, peacemaker, he said they do more than peaceful lives, they actively seek to make peace, amen, to, for others. Not only do they try to appease God in their peacemaking desire. <laughs> Amen. But they tried desperately to deal with problems in a peaceful manner. Amen. And Jesus said they'll be called the children of God. That's a strong, this, this is a, a, a strong uh, place to be. As I, I use, can't find the word of them in place. A person who's out for peace all the time. Right? He said, because, because people are so different. People's minds are so different. And when you're having a conversation with a person, their mind goes somewhere else while you're trying to talk with them. They're not really listening because you're not sharing with them what they want to hear. It's, it's, it's why when you it, it, like, like I, well, I, I can't use, I don't want to use me and my wife all the time. Amen. But if you, if you if you don't seek for a peaceful solution, you're not really gonna get there. Both of you is screaming at one another. Amen. Right. This person is trying to share what's what's going on with them, and, and this person trying to share what's going on. What is what brought us here? And so we have to be good listeners. And not talk all the time. We have to be good listen, be able to listen to what the person is actually saying. And if we're not good listening, then we're not going to actually get to the problem. And most time we complain about, we complain about, you don't never get to the problem. I'm hearing what you're saying, but you ain't telling me what's what's wrong. You follow what I'm saying? It, 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 that's what they were saying on the radio broadcast yesterday. It was talking about a man and a woman, and when they, you know, it's different between a man. A man want to get to the solution quickly, and a woman want to share, go go roundabout way of sharing why they are right here and why you have done and why she's hurting. A man just want to know what what happened. What. You know, they we we quick to get to solution, and a woman want to explain and express to to us what's going on. But as men, we don't want to listen because we want to get to the problem quickly. It doesn't lead to a peaceful solution. And then what we do, we get sad and walk away until something else <laughs> happens again, and they break it back up again. We get back at it. Oh, an advocate for peace. Because the situation of a group of people to either be for him or against him. Yeah. There's no in between. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like I said, you're going to have a majority, of, well, you're going to have a mass majority that's going to be willing to listen and follow. And those that are against it is going to get far away from it. Yeah. It's, it's, if you, you're talking, you're dealing with someone who, if you're trying to be the peacemaker, Right. You're trying to be the peacemaker. You're trying to get to the, the trying to resolve what's the problem. Why they at each other? Right. Why they angry with each other? What they can't agree. So it, it's hard if you can't get if they can't both can't share what they think is the problem. Right. Yeah. But 
But he said, the peacemaker, he said, the peacemaker, he said, they're called the children of God. Because Jesus is the one, he's the, he's the prince of peace. Yeah. 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 I know Sister McCauley, she wanted to say something, but she <laughs> didn't want to say nothing. <laughs> you with me, Sister McCauley? Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. I'm the peacemaker. You're a peacemaker? Listen, I told sister called it, but sister busted off I told her the other day, you handled that well. She didn't get upset. She didn't go behind her back. She eased into it and said what she was going to say and let her go. Mm -hmm. So she asked that. I mean, you must really listen to the church. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, listen to him. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Verse 9, 10, and 11, they, they asked 9, 10, 11, and 12, they're really connected, all connected, because he, he's moved from peacemakers, right, to being persecuted for righteousness' sake. It, it's, it, it's not, when, oftentimes when we read it, we forget about the righteousness' sake. Why they persecute you? Why they at you? At, at the start anyway. But we forget, we forget that you've got a you got the darkness in the world, the you got the demonic forces in the world that automatically against you. Mm -hmm. You fall. And so it so ten say they persecute you for righteousness sake because you want to stand up for what is right. You won't compromise your position as far as what you believe is right according to God's word. Not according to what Ryan and Bull are saying, but according to what the Bible is saying. Right? For righteousness sake. He said, for theirs is where kingdom of heaven. Right, because if you can endure that to the end, if you're constantly standing for righteousness, he says, yours is going to be for the kingdom. Because what you're standing up for the kingdom you're not compromising who you are. You don't want to compromise who you are as a man. And the women don't want to compromise who they are as a woman. You don't want nobody to tell you, tell you you less than who you think you are. And so you don't want to, you don't want to belittle the word of God. It's easier to do if you don't know the word. If somebody can tell you some stuff. But if you don't know the word or search the scripture for yourself, you won't know. But if you say, I'm a Christian, I don't give my life to Christ Jesus, and the enemy comes and say, you ain't saved. You see, you do what you have to do. I'm saved. I confess hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you, say, you ain't saved, you're still doing the same thing. I'm saved. You see, you don't, want, you don't compromise yourself. And the enemy try, will try to do that. You persecuted. You talked about. You know. You're not. They don't invite you to none of their gatherings. And when they come, when you come around, they get quiet. Yeah. You see, there's different forms of persecution. The, the persecution back then, they was taking them and stoning them, hanging them on a tree, putting them in a ring on it, turning lions on them or tigers on them. But persecution comes in different form in our day and time. And they said, hold the holy roll. Don't want to go talk to her. You better stay away from Brother McCall. He's going to be trying to get you to go up to Washington Hills. There you go. <laughs> so, right in this thing. Right. And, 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 and I'm going to stop right there. I'm, I'm at 10. I'm going to stop right there. Because 11 and 12, look, let me read 11 and 12. He said, blessed are you men when men shall revive you Use language against you, all kind of slanderous words against you, and persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely for whose sake? My sake. Not for your sake. Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. And some we have got that mixed up. Because they talk, they talking about me and all that. Yeah, they're talking about you. Not for Jesus' sake. Not for who you are in Christ. But because of who you are in your neighborhood or what you've done, your back, you, you, your background or things of that nature, they talk about you. 
He said, but if they're talking about your revival, you talk, use kind of language against you, talking behind your back when we can't stand, the, the, the blessing comes in 12. He said, rejoice. If they don't get to that point where they're persecuting you because you're a child of God, he said, rejoice. Verse 12. And, and be exceedingly glad. Because great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophet which were before you. You, 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 you fall in line with great prophets. Because they've done it to them, they do it, they do it to you. I think he, the, in, in, I think in the Bible, Luke says, in the book of Luke, he said, he said, if they hate you, they hated me first. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so, and so the world gonna hate you because of what you stand for <clears throat> and what you believe. Right, you know, when you deal with that, you know, sometimes as as, as Christians, we do bad things, but uh, the person that's persecuting you for that bad thing you've done, don't know that you've been born again. Even that, even in my in my mess, I can tell the Lord God that. Has yeah. Big difference. You can talk all you want to, but I'm a child of God. I messed up. I yeah. messed up about that yeah. stuff. Man. That's so true. And, and it's so true. And I'm, I'm glad you, you, you realize that. But there's a whole lot of believers who's, who's bathed in Christ don't ha have not gotten to that point. Because when we fall down, we get back up. Yeah. And, and, and what they say, they look at us supposed to be perfect beings, but we're not perfect. Because we give our life to Christ, we're not perfect. Some things will come out of us that's, that, that's not pleasant and good, but we're not pleasant. We won't be perfect until we get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Till we shed this flesh, the body of ours. Till this flesh, the body, lay down and turn back to dust. We won't be perfect. Then, then we don't have to worry about all of that because there won't be any evil ones. Amen. It won't be in the dark ones around who, who come to irritate us or dare to persecute us or to accuse, falsely accuse us. That's what they say, brother. You're supposed to be a Christian. Yeah, yeah. You got family members who say that to you. Mm -hmm. and, and know your, your life have changed, completely changed. You ain't in the streets, you're not drinking. Your life completely changed, but just to fall one time. They say that. But how they know how a Christian is supposed to be if they're not a Christian? So, so yeah, we can get back up. Yeah, another thing, you know, when you say crucify, people, people can crucify you with their words. I mean, yeah. people say some, some of the bad things. Yeah. 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 Oh, blow up. They all, yeah. That's, this, is, this is what they do. They're, they're bent on trying to get you right to, to walk away or declare yourself against the holy word of God. You see, we, we can't we can't compromise, we can't we can't walk away. He's been too good to us. Amen. Brought you too far. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for this for the word that you allowed us to, to share tonight. Master we the many ones, the blessed, the, the pure in heart, those that moan and those that are thirst hungry and thirsty, Lord God. We we know there's so many people that desire, Lord God, to 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 walk the right way, the ones to help others. And Master, they just don't have the get up or the energy to do it. And we pray, oh God, that you continue to be with those that come out tonight, strengthen them where they seem to be weak. We pray that the home be home of peace, love, and joy. Lord God, we just thank you. Thank you for keeping our family intact, the Washington Hill Church family Amen. intact. We pray for all our sick and every head that's bowed down and breathing. We pray, oh God, that you continue to comfort them and lift their heads up with joy so they can declare hallelujah to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.